Hi everyone. Welcome again. So in, th in this session, uh, we will talk about a problem known as increasing triplet subsequence. This is lead code 334. So the question is, if we have a uh, given unsorted array, so we have unsorted array, and we will return true if there exists a triplet like array a r i so if there are three indexes i j k which are increasing order and the numbers in those indexes are increasing order we return true so we have to find if there is a in triplet increasing triplet three numbers which are increasing order and the indexes are also in the same order and uh, for this question, we have two examples. So there are second condition is on the O and time. We can iterate through the array just one time. And over space complexity, we are not supposed to copy the array or make some new space. So the solution is here we have class solution and increasing triplet is the name of function. The input is a list of integers and R type, R type is Boolean. So what we do here is we have to find three numbers which are in increasing order. So we will first create two variables, first and second, and we, we are initializing both of them to float into infinite. So we store infinite into first and second value. And now we will iterate through the nums, which is the array. So for n is nums, for a number n nums, the first number if the first number n is less than or equal to the first which we have initialized to infinite we replace the first is equals to n so the lowest number which we get becomes first and if the number we get now this loop will run again and if the number we get now n is let's say is greater than first so the first condition will not satisfy we will come to second condition which is alif n is less than equal to second. So if the first n is greater than first, but this is less than second, the second becomes the n. So in this way, the first two conditions ensuring that the highest number we get, the lowest number we get at any time is stored in first. And a number which is higher than first and is lowest, so which is second lowest, we store in second. And these two conditions are checked whenever we get a third number which is larger than both of them so it means if it is larger than first and second the both condition will not satisfy we will go to third condition the else and we return true so basically if we have two numbers which are less than the third one we return true because we get the triplet and if this never happens and we iterate through the array completely we return false so it's a very tricky question very simple solution but Sometimes it's, a, it's, it's difficult to understand how it, why it happens, how it happens. So let's take two examples to understand it. The first example is an array, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is an array with five elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we can see that triplet exists here. So one triplet, 1, 2, 3. Second triplet is 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. So there are three possible triplets here. But we don't have to find the triplet. We only have to return if such a triplet exists or not. So here I'm writing F for the first element, yes for the second, just for simplicity notations. So let's initialize F and S to both to infinity. So the first element here is F and second element of uh, second is the second element here. So equal to times by is equal to, but it basically means we are updating them. So at the start of the array, we start the array for n in nums. So one, first element is one. When one comes in, we check the condition that one is less than or equal to first. So the first become one, second remains the same. And then the next element becomes two and loop will run. And so now the two is greater than first, which is one. So the second condition will check will be checked. So two is less than or equal to second, which is infinity. So it becomes one comma two. And now next third time we have the number three. And when we see the number three, the three is greater than false. So this doesn't satisfy. 
three is also greater than two, so second function then satisfy we become the third condition which is true. So we return true. So we found the triplet. So basically it looks for triplet and if you found one increasing triplet it returns true. You don't go further even though there are more triplets. In the second example, consider an array, the same array in the reverse order. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Definitely, we see that there are no triplets because the reverse order, and we are looking for an increasing triplet. There could be a very similar question where we talk about decreasing triplet. You can think about how to solve them. Very similar lines, but I'm not talking about it. Let's iterate the problem with this example. So in the initial, we have f, comma s, first and second, both reset to infinity. When 5 comes, 5 is less than infinite, and so 5 is updated to 5. F, uh, F is updated to 5. Next, 4 comes, and now 4 is less than first, which is 5. So now the first is re updated to 4, and then next 3 comes, and 3 is again less than 4. So first is updated, and so on. So here, the first condition keeps satisfying, and we have finished iterating through the loop and always the first one is satisfied and so after this iteration we are returning false because we couldn't update second element until the end and this was it so thank you for watching this video before i hang up let me tell you that there could be more questions based on this for example one question i can think of is to tell me the number of increasing triplet subsequential. So for example, in the first example, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have three triplets, one, two, three, one first triplet, second triplet is two, three, four, and third triplet is three, four, five. And for this, we just have to make the loop, and we have to check, throw it off. And whenever we get a triplet, we have to increase the a counter, we, have, we can fix it. Another very simple question can be, to find the decreasing triplet subsequence. So first element is the highest and then decreases. So there we have to initialize the first and second is minus infinity. And instead of checking the and less than equal to first, we have to check and is greater than equal to first and so on. And we can get the solution. So if you want, you can try it. And a lot of times you will see that th this dynamic programming approach is similar for many other problems. Thank you for watching this video and if you like this solution, please subscribe my channel. Thank you.